Hello there Reason and Nectar people, Pooh Bear here, welcome to my channel and today we're going to be looking at Nectarine. We're going to be looking at more of the mapping side of it but we will have a look at Nectarine as a whole as well. So the first thing we need to go to do is to go onto the Nectar site and go to my products and then we just need to download Nectarine itself. It's a very quick installer, it doesn't take too long to download. Once downloaded all you need to do is just open it up, simple exe accept the agreement I have to change this location to where my VSTs are installed and as you can see it supports um, VST 2s and VST 3 and I don't have any VST, well actually I do have VST 3 but I don't have any uh, VST 3 doors And that's it set up. So the next thing we need to do is start Reason up. Click on Add Device. Under Instruments, you have a Nectar subgroup. And there we've got Nectarine, and we've got a Nectarine 32 out. So we're going to choose Nectarine. Obviously, just like any other VST, we're going to click on Open. And this is what you're presented with. There's not really a lot that goes on because we haven't got any plugins at all um, been installed inside Nectarine. So the first thing we need to do is click on Settings. Plugin options, and we're going to click on Scan for new or updated VST plugins. It also supports obviously VST3, as I said earlier, but this obviously this is reason only supports VST door um, twos, so that's all we're going to scan for in this particular scenario. I have to just change my location of where my VSTs are installed. And then it's going to be a simple case of just clicking on the, the scan. So whilst that scan in the background, what is Nectarine? Well, Nectarine is obviously compatible with VST, VST3s and AU compatible plugins. And really, it gives you deep uh, integration uh, into your VSTs from this interface. And it doesn't matter which door you run it on. So yes, we're doing this in Reason. But once I've mapped it once, I can go to a totally different door, um, load up this uh, this wrapper, put my instruments in it, and I'm going to have exactly the same mappings. So going forward, it could be a very powerful um, tool. As long as, and I think this is what's missing at the moment, we need to get a repository together of everyone who's doing their mappings. And yeah, it'd be very powerful because then the mappings would all be there available for everybody. So let's quickly whiz over the interface and then we can get into some mappings. So on the very first tab, when you click on it, is your presets. When you click on this from a brand new installation, there's going to be absolutely nothing in there. In the no plugins selected, it's a blank screen. I'll come back and talk about that in a minute. We have a browser where we can actually set up um, patches. So you can import your patches and obviously you can categorize them and it's a way of searching and managing your patches. And in fact, let's quickly load up some patches. So Nectar themselves have um, produced loads of banks of patches which you can just actually install. They're not actually new patches. They're existing patches which come as default with the VST, but it just enables you to quickly um, bulk import them into Nectaring. So I'm just gonna click on open on that. That's actually opened up a screen on my other screen, sorry, a window on my other screen. So I'm just gonna quickly import 100 items there. And there we go, so I've now just imported 100 items from the base station and they're all there available for me. Edit, we're gonna have a good old look into. Settings we've been into already and the help, well, there's a link to the actual Nectarine help. So let's first of all go back to the no plugin selected. Bit of a blank screen, bit of a worry because there's nothing there to say, oh, what am I gonna click on? Don't worry, click on it again. And then you get your list of manufacturers and then obviously from there, we can actually obviously then go in and select an instrument. And I'm actually gonna select myself uh, an M1 to start with. So, this is it here, and if we click on Edit, this is what the mapping looks like. So, I'm just, I'm, unfortunately, I'm just gonna bring up uh, my screen overlay so you can see if I'm actually moving in my controls or anything. Um, I can't zoom in on the, the actual Nectarine screen, but I will quickly put up a picture to so, so you can see exactly what it's going to look like. 
And let's actually have a good look at the screen itself to start with. Over on the left hand side you have all the parameters. There's a little minus so you can actually hide the parameters if you wish to do so. In the middle is the actual screen layout itself. And of course any P users, if you're looking at this, yep, yeah, it looks exactly the same as the um, the P series. And if you look there, the, hey, that's where an extra button is going to suddenly appear. Because we have five buttons, X buttons on the uh, P series and there's only four on the T. And again, there's a little plus and minus where we can actually hide the tree view. And the tree view is really is to do with our pages and this is how we can make multiple pages so if I click on here obviously then we got you know you can see as we're going through we can actually create up different pages of different parameters and that's something I'm going to go through step by step um, with a, a VST so I think the next thing to do probably is to really go back into the layer page and obviously this little plus here and I now can click on where it says no plugin and again I can now go and select another plugin and I can start layering up my plugins if I want and I'm actually going to pick out one of Benedict's um, Space Synth 101s and here it is and I can switch obviously backwards and forth between the two and as I'm switching backwards and forth between the, these, these two things we are going to get a, a different screen as well so I'm going to just delete out my M1 so I'm left with this, this one here totally on its own. Now I'm picking on this VST because I know for a fact um, Nectar won't have this and uh, when we come in here it hasn't actually been mapped out but you might look at it and go well actually there is things mapped out. What it's done it's literally taken the order of the parameters so what there is there's, there's remotes uh, what we refer to as remote mappings uh, which are available to VSTs. So if you come across like with the M1, there's a lot of parameters which haven't been made or exposed. So it's not Nectarine's fault, it's not Reason's fault, it's obviously Korg's fault in that particular case. They decided not to expose certain parameters. They're not available, they're not available. On this, this little device, yes, all these uh, options are available. And as you can see, it's a small little device as well. So it's literally taken one for one and it's just literally mapped them out to these four basic pages. It's actually done quite well there with the amp and the filters actually sort of seem to have built, pulled them out. So as I say this is a real basic one to map. Um, one of the things I think which I'm really missing in this little editor is I want to be able to see my VST at the same time is really seeing the editor because it really does help when you're mapping so I'm just going to move this over to one corner and I'm actually going to um, just open up or, or I'm going to open up that and then let's keep this open and I'm going to click on this and I'm going to open up this VST and I'm going to have it on the screen over here as well and this makes a big difference that you've been able, able to see what the controls are to what you're you're mapping over here. Um, it helps you group them together um, and, work, and work out what you want on what pages. And I've, I've done another video before saying helping us helping you and as I say the biggest thing with mapping is working out what are we going to be putting on each page. And as a simple, well obviously you can look at like this device here and go well We've got four controls here, then we've got a bunch of controls here in a little group, and it is just good to try and group things up. So my starting point is actually going to be in the tree view, so I can actually work out what am I going to do with each page. So if I actually click on page A and then double click on it, I can actually change the name of that page, and I'm just going to call this oscillator one. And the same with page B, whoops, oscillator two slash three. That's my fault, I didn't hit enter, so you have to remember to hit enter on this. I'm so used to, obviously, other applications where you can step away and remember. And then page C, I'm gonna actually make my filter. And I actually, I want another page. I'm gonna have a page four, because I'm gonna have a page four for my modulation, and I'm gonna have that pitch bend mod there and the pormento in there as well. So down here, we can sort of click on add page, and here is a new page. Again, I'm gonna double click on this, and I'm just going to call this mod. And the fader home, well, yep, so 
maybe I'm just going to call that my envelopes. So now I've got my basic layout, I can obviously start populating each of these pages. So on my home page, I think the very first couple of um, options are always quite good to have, say, a filter. Um, and then usually it could be more to do with the leveling. Um, and, that's, and actually what's what I might do, I'm actually going to pull out the master. So there's one thing. Uh, usually when we do mappings, we always put the master volume onto fader nine and there doesn't seem to be an option in here to say this is where I'm going to be putting my master volume so I'm going to have that on my first page as well um, as I said I think having that level looks quite a good one and let's quickly see if we can whiz through and find that level it's here and I'm going to put that there now that's not a very good description there so what I can do here next to this parameter is double click and obviously I can now give this a slightly different name and I'm actually going to call it level because that falls in line with the label which is actually on the, the VST so and as you can see it's actually updated on the screen there and that will also reflect on the T-series screen as well um, and and as for the bottom four I probably will end up going for some of the LFO stuff. That's always quite good stuff to um, bring in and out of. And in fact, yeah, let's bring them all down. As I say, what you're putting on there, it's, it's purely down to you of what you'd like. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through and I'm going to populate all these. Okay, so I finished sort of populating this particular mapping and yet yeah, I've made a few changes to the front end. I decided to call something called uh, envelope filter envelope amount. That was for the uh, depth. It's just the name I, I liked myself. This is the great thing about mapping. You can really personalize what you wish to do. Yeah, and I've also doubled up on one or two things, but that was more again to show and demonstrate, yes, we can add extra pages. And obviously we I haven't actually gone into adding a sub page, but a sub page would be, I could add a sub page here and you can see I've got a mod page there and then I can actually add even more detail and we can have a simple cycle button to cycle between them two. So if I click on remove page, it removes it and puts it back up a level higher. Um, we do have these buttons here as well. So I could easily grab this filter. If it was a button, it's not, it doesn't really make sense to actually have that on as a button, but it's there now as a button. As you can see, it's called X1. These are, I say, refer to these buttons as the X buttons. Um, if there's something I don't want, you just click on it and hit your delete key on your, your normal keyboard and you can remove stuff. So it doesn't matter where it is. There, I just have to highlight it. We've got the box around it. I can just hit the delete key and I've now just removed it. So really the next bit is the fun bit is um, working out your navigation of how it's actually going to look like on the actual T-Series itself and how you're going to navigate from page to page. Because obviously in this view, you can just click on the tree view and you're getting from page to page. But obviously on the Nectar itself, you've got to navigate and we usually navigate using these buttons here. So this is the very, very first page. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I'm going to program this button here and that button I'm actually going to take and put it to my envelope. And that one, we click on there. So it's navigation and it's going to go to the envelope. This button here, I'm actually going to move on to oscillator one. That's excellent. And then what we're going to do, I'm actually going to use my, use the button now on the actual keyboard itself and press oscillator one. It's automatically change the page for me. And I'm going to move this onto oscillator two and three. I can even hit that button again. I'm now on oscillator two and three, which is going to go onto my filters. Hit that button again. And then from the filters, we can go into the mod. And from the, the, the mod, we can go into the envelope view. And then from the envelope view, I'm going to go back to home. So that's going to give me basically a way I can actually scroll through all them pages going forward. 
And the next thing what I like to do is to go backwards as well. So I'm gonna put a mod in there, go backwards a page, from mods goes to filters, hit that button again, then from filters to oscillator one and two, oscillator one and two to oscillator one, And then obviously from oscillator one, we're gonna to go to the home page. So now I've got navigation where I can actually go page up and page down. And obviously going up and down helps when you've got um, a lot more pages going on. So this is a good way of actually navigating away. Now there's no reason why you couldn't say on oscillator two over here say, actually, I want to always be able to have my home button. So then on the next page, I might say, actually there, I'm gonna have a home button again. So it's purely down to you how you want to assign these buttons. As I say, you might have some of these buttons actually assigned on the VST itself as well. So you might not have as many spare. But you can see now I've got that home button on these three and whenever I hit that, I can now whiz straight to my home. And that is really a nice basic mapping and that mapping is now going to be made available um, whatever door um, I take it into. And that's the great thing about it. And so the final thing I'm gonna show you is what I'm gonna do is click on Save Changes. That's now gonna create a file. And if I go get my Explorer, you can see actually it's in your documents, Nectar, Nectarine, Mapping Files, Instruments, and it creates these files. Um, as I say, and it'd be these files that we should be able to share around and make a repository of. Um, so that's the basics of Nectarine, especially on the mapping side. Um, there is a few more things, I think, on this side, which I didn't really touch on. Like, as I say, you can multi-layer instruments and you can change the pan between them. And really, um, when you're actually in here, uh, let's just grab something, oh, that'll do. Um, this is where we've got the multi-mode. So we probably haven't used the multi-mode button yet. And what we can do is we can actually hit the multi-mode and it's gonna show me the fact I've got two up. Uh, I don't know what's happened to, oh, there it is. It's like it gave it a little bit of a glitch. So now I'm in the multi-mode, as I say, I can use these buttons over here to actually solo and you can see it's going solo there on the screen same with that one um, and obviously we've, we can actually start changing the, the volume levels and all the rest of it so if you've got as I say you can have up to 16 VST so you can obviously come in here and also in here I've got the ability to say add a slot so now I've clicked on add a slot I think I've got to actually scroll down to actually see it because it's actually just below me so there there it is <laughs> and now obviously I can go and add something else if I wish so actually it's going to add one of them so a bit smaller they fit on the screen you see and again, if I click on add again, there we go. We've got ourselves another slot and we can just keep going on and on and on. And from here again, I can actually navigate around as well. So that is really um, what the multi-mode button really is, is for, as I say, when you're in use in, uh, inside Nectarine. Um, but obviously I'm gonna click on the instrument because that's what I want to, to control. And I say, even though I'm on this, this is the brand new instant, um, Oh no, I've still got this one highlighted. So I saw that one is actually still highlighted and that's why I can actually see the controls on my thing. And if I click on there, yeah. So now if we go into the edit screen, this is Space Syntho 2 and we're back to our sort of pages. So over here, if I click on that number one, this is the new the new mapping what we've done. So that's how we get to navigate around. And as I say, don't forget to remember to click on your saved changes to make sure it's saved, saved it back, back to that file. Um, well, that's about it for this video. I hope you get some good ideas on how you can use Nectarine in your workflow process. Um, thank you for watching and bye for now.